and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we are looking at Morgana. Yes, because it's asked a lot, and because we've had an off-meta talk in the bootcamp, and I kind of got invigorated by it, and because Kale did so damn well that there must be a room for her sister in the metascape. Obviously, Riot did buff her last year and make it giga OP for one patch, but ever since then, it hath died. It does no longer exist, and you don't really see it. However, Mars Patel is a 200 RP or so master tier game. I'm just making sure it's recording. That froze uh, not too long ago. And he plays Morgana pretty much exclusively. Basically one of the rank 1 Morganas, if not the rank 1 Morgana jungle player on the server. Let's observe how we can navigate against a highly aggressive team comp. We have Aatrox, Kha'Zix, LeBlanc, Vega, and Nami, which means Phase Rush is the go-to rune here. Now normally, yes, we are going to do Dark Harvest. As you see the pings there from Nami, Morgana jungle, that's free, right? Totally. Kha'Zix is confident. Blizzard LOL knows what he's going to do. Now, in the bootcamp and in typically these, in typical these meta videos, as the runes will show up the full page with approach velocity and phase rush gaming, um, I, you know, I talk about the difficulties of playing an off-meta jungler. And they really do exist. It is really difficult to play an off-meta jungler and succeed in high elo, especially when there are a lot of weaknesses. And for Morgana, that huge clearing speech you have, that was great. And I will leave the match history link to this in the description so you can see um, I do this in every video, but you can exactly see the nature of the gold graph, and that's quite typical for an off-meta jungler. However, we are simply going to go for what we can call a conservative start. 125% bot lane did not go for a conservative start, but I would definitely be warding level 1 protect your camps. This is a kind of lazy start that I've looked at a lot from this player that costs them a lot of games. They just get killed, they get invaded, they do predictable clears, and it makes it very difficult to, th to thrive and flourish. I almost can bind that word into something weird. But the phase rush means that you can definitely keep your spacing from uh, aggressive melee junglers and make sure that they can't really stick to you, which is obviously the trick when you're playing something like a squishy mage and you have flash. Now, in terms of the first four clear, let's look at the quadrant here. Should be okay because we get the refund on the uh, W, of course, which gives us very good sustain. We're at around 233 running across mid lane. 10 seconds slower than a prime nidly. Not that bad. Really not that bad. Aatrox, for uh, contrast, before the sweet spot buff, was at 245. So we're a lot faster than that. Angels of Death will thrive together as well. I guess I'm saying thrive. Although, you know what? Why not? If you're playing uh, this champion and you're enjoying it, and you're actually climbing, go for it. You know, I'm always about su supporting win conditions and, and unique ways to play the game. And it doesn't really matter as long as you are a good pilot. With the Kale Jungle, I covered another one I recently in my Discord. We got the reset that's a bit sad. It, these things work, these people just understand the limitations and spikes of the champion. So if you can make sure this first clear is good and have a very good level 1, 100% please. Very, very good level 1. These, these these level 1s that this player does are not very good. They slightly annoy me. So make sure you're warding your entrances and protecting yourself. Uh, chug those potions as you need. If you don't need the second potion and you don't plan on fighting, Kha'Zix shows mid lane here. Um, don't think there's too much to listen to, but uh, double buffs we see here, 24 CS. He's going to push that wave. That's very, very good. If an enemy jungler like this shows first, then you've got control with bot lane early, and you know that they've been trading, because hopefully you're clearing, you're noticing these things, and you see, okay, sums are burned. Use a little bit of patience. Nami's getting skittish. Do I check the bush? Do I check the bush? That's what we want. We hit the W. We hit our, sorry, we hit our Q, and then we hit our W. Of course, we give our friend a black shield, and now we can potentially look to cut this wave and go bot lane. We're just waiting for this one, but Vega says, I'm going to turn it around, which is obviously what you want to do here to bait it out. We see here that Kha'Zix showed up, Goes to the top side. 100% we're going to now take these Krugs, considering we see them, they are available. And obviously we didn't get the bottom crab, so we know he took that as well. Hey, Vagar, what's up? We do miss the Q, unfortunate. Uh, bouncy Bomb. Bouncy Bomb. Black Shield. Beautiful. And Black Shield, if you are against things like Vagar, people get really irritated. Respect Flash is very important, okay? The TPs will still happen against you on these dives. 100% they will still happen. So make sure you're actually, um, you know, abusing that... Nerf on the teleport by gaining some distance. And if you hang around too much, you're going to actually have a few issues here. Uh, abusing, I just recognize, you know? Sorry, the words are escaping me. It's been a long week. All right. So out of base we go. Our Orn in the top lane. Aatrox with flash auto, uh, yeah, auto attack. So obviously, the key thing when you're playing this kind of jungle, where you're not going to have the same innate impact. And you see the Kha'Zix obviously sliced down. You see the Kha'Zix cut up. Um, you know he's obviously done that while taking the crab because you're a little slow. Capitalize by being where he isn't. Kha'Zix goes up, I go down. Great, excellent. You know, this is the lane I want to gank anyway. Um, but while you're clearing, you're staring at the map, you're watching what sums are burned because it's crucial when you have a bit more of conditional CC. Zyra E, meh. Uh, Morgana Q, they're great spells, but having stacking CC and knowing when there's no flash is very, very good. I get kind of nervous 
in these situations. Um, but at this point, I think, considering this basically a straight sequence, we're not too worried about Kha'Zix invades just yet. Key for us, the key for us is to make sure that we can sequence well, efficiently. Get a few items, and now, already with uh, Fiendish Condex, you're seeing the clear speed increase tenfold. Uh, not quite tenfold, but let's use some hyperbole quite significantly. And obviously, with Morgana, we do love the Leandries, in particular this game. There should be some decent HP or enough HP that could justify it regardless. And obviously, Marilla Nomicon is being built a lot by this player, along with mostly going Dark Harvest. So those are like your core items and rune sets. Kha'Zix now show bot lane again. Surprise! The dude sequenced down, took two grabs, and ganked mid lane. Of course he's sequencing down. What are we going to do here? If you see it, you can counter gank it, that's for sure. We hit the plant. The control wood here is very, very good. I like this. If you're pushing his bot lane, try and keep this so it's easy for your jungler. Uh, there's no real need to scan unless you're afraid of some kind of invade here. But this wave is pushing, and we're kind of just shadowing the, the Kha'Zix here. Because of a sequence of doing this, um, and we took this, that's a little offset, right? The Krugs are offset from his regular sequence. So him wasting a bit of time, using time to gank, and then falling back to that can always be very, very useful. Um, here we're just kind of laying ganking to bait it out. Because you don't know if he stayed or went back to base. So you're kind of shadowing it and waiting for something to be available. Uh, Kiana goes mid lane. Sorry, this is Kiana going top lane, excuse me. And helps the Orny boy out for a little bit of juice. Again, we use the vision control here. This is a lot of time we're putting into this bottom lane. Oh, that is a beautiful double bomb. We're able to hit the W almost on both. <laughs> almost on both. Fractional. So a lot of people actually ask, and this is a very good time to address that. How long do we wait for a gank? Well, think of it this way. You sequence all the way down, right? And you sequence so quickly that the spawn timer on your Krug, say for example, it's, you know, in 30 seconds, 45 seconds, one minute's time because you're so quick. You've got a lot of time to play on the map before you need to base and get to your Krugs. And look at this. This is exactly what we're timing. We're timing the map plays such that we can recall and get into this. What we want to accomplish in that time is ganking lanes. Ganking lanes. Counter jungling if we need to. Counter ganking if we need to. And if we can get plates, maybe a neutral objective, do that as well. You're looking to fill that downtime between a full sequence with meaningful jungling. With things that help your team get a lead and help you get fed. And as an off-matter jungler or someone like a Morgana, Kale, Zyra that wants to farm quite extensively, it's very, very important that you do that. You let, to a degree, the events of the map happen. Um, you're playing around yourself a little bit, and if people want to run around crazy, do so. Rotate and reactively path to ganks without a doubt, please, but do not, under any stretch of the imagination, overcommit to those particular things. So the ping there, you see, Kha'Zix said, I was timing that, so I took it. And obviously that's what the Morgana didn't factor in, okay? That's what the Morgana didn't factor in, but again, do you care too much? I'm upset. But I invested so much time bottom lane, I kind of expected some kind of play like that. And the fact that this, ju this jungler is 1-0-0, zero, zero, okay? And yeah, he's up in CS because he's a meta jungler. He will farm faster. He's been catching waves. He's been ganking. He got two crabs. I'm not expecting to basically out-jungle him at this point. I'm just making sure that I can stay relevant. And Morgana jungles and such, not the Kales, but the Morganas and the Zyrus, can be very good low econ junglers. You don't need a lot of gold. You're designed as a support. Good job bot lane. So the main important thing for you is... Do what you can to aid in the lanes you've, dictate, you've determined are for you to win. And then make sure you play around it while infusing yourself as best you can. Now with Morgana and so on and any one of these champions, you can 1v9. You can do the most damage. And I didn't click on the game that had the most damage because it was like a 40 minute game. And it really just absolute fiesta mode. But the Morgana did the most damage. The benefit of Morgana as an off meta jungler that a Kaelin and Azire struggle with a lot more is this. Right here, it's this. The ability to solo dragons. So you would have seen, hopefully watching this, that Charlie Heaton, which is our beloved um, uh, Agurin on EU West, is actually in the AD carry role. So would you normally gam uh, gank and uh, play around a filled jungler bot lane as your win condition? No, but when it's Agurin, I think we can trust him a little bit. That was a nice cue to try and hit it, get the root, get the knockback. Excellent. This is just basic extrapolation. Dude shows here, walks back here. We have prayer, we move down. Disrespect from Kha'Zix, knowing that the dragon was taken. We use a good angle of approach. Rinse him from this life. Vega, same thing. Hello, sir. Good night, sir. That's it. That's it. Um, I almost, almost completely hiccuped. <laughs> I was about to say that Orn dies once more. Uh, Friskis One is not having a good time. Um, you know, when Orns are kind of abused top lane, you know me. I get a bit oversensitive. I don't like to see this kind of violence um, on my Orny brothers, but what can you do? Again, though... 
excellent use of just controlling your jungle. The most important thing is to control your jungle. Okay, so the Kha'Zix DC'd, but I checked to make sure he does come back. It's just a little brief thing, so the game isn't compromised whatsoever. What's really funny is that I've seen games recently where, where someone will DC uh, just briefly for whatever reason, and people think it's a free game, and then they just come back and win because someone has to take that lane. Someone has to take that farm. They do. They get really, really strong. The person who comes back just has to play a little bit more a low economy, but they're still able to play to the win conditions. So here now, you're pushing the bot lane. Remember, don't greet too much because obviously you've lane swapped at this point. The LeBlanc is going to know there's two people and they don't want to give five plates for free and then give another couple, uh, there you go, give another couple plates to the mid lane. So this for me is a little over aggressive. Again, TP committed from the LeBlanc for the defense. Uh, you can easily take plates, reset. You had a lot of gold, especially on the mid laner. And that's, that's just an unnecessary shutdown. I don't understand this. However, the whole principle here from our perspective as the humble sequencing jungler of the game is that if we can push this to get that and buy enough time so that the sequence can be reversed is good. Now, again, let's see what happens here. Absolute chaos. I think what you're learning a lot from this particular game is that the more you can take the low variance play, the more you can control your farm and experience, the better off you're going to be overall, especially if you can snack an objective here and there. Obviously, hold waves too. Hold and push waves. You've seen that a lot. Get a lot of farm from holding and pushing waves um, and denying platings. And it's not just about the waves, guys. If LeBlanc stays here now and gets a plate or two, if that's a fat wave, and you could have just held it and cleared it and she gets zero or one, big, 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 big. So five plates top, five plates, oh, four plates bottom lane. We got, uh, let's see, three here. And obviously, we've got one there plus two there. So in terms of platings, definitely not as one-sided as you might have thought with bot lane collapsing it so early. Excuse this graphic at the top to tell you towers. Um, that's not on me. But we haven't used our ult yet, really. So let's go ahead and use that like for a sort of game-changing play. But it don't do so much. I mean, if you can burn flashes, which you pretty much always do, it's absolutely free. Zillion's kind of flanking for some particular reason. Really should be. Gets absolutely rinsed by the bug life. Make sure you're kiting this camp out if you know this is happening. Can we do a flank here? Ezreal Gurin shows up. Another W used. Auto attack. Make sure you use your smites. Use your phase rush to move in and out. See, creating some good spacing. Force the Kha'Zix to really move. Exquisite use and example of that rune right there. Well done. The ult burning flash is something I really, really love. Um, it's irritating, but it means the next time you can use it. For reference, for those of you who don't know, um, we've got now five points into uh, W, obviously for clearing. So the, the faster clearing, definitely much better. So this cooldown is basically from up. This one here gives you nice scaling root duration to three seconds. It's only two to three. Uh, you guys actually can't see it, but it's two to three seconds from rank one to rank five. So now you can kind of make your jokes that it feels like it's a thousand years. Go ahead, type them out in the comments. I know any puns or time references to Morgana's cute, type them up, type, get them out of your system, and then we'll carry on with the gameplay, shall we? For the ultimate, 95 seconds, it scales down to 79, so really, not a lot, huh? Actually, for some ults, there's some giga scaling in the CDR, but for Morgana with the CDR and the haste we have at the moment with um, Leandries, it's 95 to 79 for max rank. Very interesting. We do have, from our perspective, a decent lead on the map. Not in gold. It feels like it's in gold, but it's not in gold. And that's what's very important here. When you play, okay, we saw something, there we go, we saw it. We're up a level now. So with that lead, if you feel that you have that map control, all right, move into the jungle and start to look for those picks as Morgana, because you can easily one-shot people with a QWR. Uh, there, Ooh, W again, we get a little bit of burn damage. Alt is activated, so we do see him, unfortunately for us. Exhaust is used, we're gonna use our ultimate once more. A phase rush trying to gain distance, but we didn't gain enough and we die. Unfortunate. For most unfortunate. Now, from a strategic point of view, if your team is by themselves, if the Ezreal ult shows the Kha'Zix, the Kha'Zix, hey, knows I was detected, don't waste too much time here. It's better to try and flank and use numbers. If you don't have numbers and you're not gonna play that fight whatsoever, Make sure you take camps if you can. If a situation looks doomed, don't try and be a hero if it's not going to get you anything, okay? Simply take the camps you can. If there's nothing you can do for the Time Lord, for Bjergsen, you move back into the blue side jungle, you control that. What you can also do is just simply snack on a dragon. Um, if someone pushes here, makes fights and goes up, I'll just go take the dragon, tit for tat. So Morgana being alive here would have been huge, absolutely huge, I feel. Because if they don't go for a dragon, you take it. After you've taken red and raptors, you can then fall back to your blue side. Aatrox is not pushing. If you have enough damage with your team, you can kind of kill him or you just reset. So discipline there is huge and something we've been talking about a lot um, in these videos and also my coaching sessions.
And again, the Kha'Zix, if, if he dies or if he has too low to do anything, you're missing out because you died. So if the jungler's gray screen are forced to base and you can't maximize that, problems, okay? Problems. Because like, like like we saw right here, you know, it shows, I mean, what's his TP, bro? <laughs> it's unleashed though. It's up again in a few seconds. It's not quite Luxold. I do kind of like you setting some traps because they'll think you kind of recall because what are we at now? Oh, uh, we died. So in my mind, I actually played through the scenario where she didn't die. So I thought we had a whole bunch of gold in pocket. Uh, we, she did die, so we don't. <laughs> If you have a lot of gold in that particular situation, then 100% they might think you base, but you don't, so. It's a little bit now uh, quieter, but this is essentially exactly what we're looking for. Chain CC, assassinations, just give a black shield for some free assist. Also not talked about enough. Things like Javan, uh, supportive jungles or shields that can kind of give uh, some steroids and things like that, really give you free assists in certain fights. So you don't actually have to waste spells uh, to try get assists, to try get golds, because you do that too, right? You think, I kind of want the assist, I know the counter can one shot, I just want to use one spell. But then the crucial spells on cooldown. With this one, it's just a black shield to make sure you don't get stunned on the uh, Vagar cage. Over push again by the Time Lord, because we have split push at bot lane. Orn is not very good at the game. <laughs> well, in this game, he's not having a good time. So, let's activate our ult, let's try to get some stuns. Remember, use your phase rush to create more distance to make sure he uses his gap closes. Again, kite, kite, kite. Auto, wait for your Q again. If you can hit another W, then we do so. Wee, didn't work. Nothing worked. Oh my goodness. Man, I really thought that was going to go the other way. <sighs> no for that. Man, I... I I know it's Aatrox, I know he's got Gold Drinker, I know he's got Help Breaker, I'm looking at it, but I'm like, you can do it! You know, it's like you kind of think you can, and then you can't, and that's the problem with things like Aatrox. Good buffs, great item, especially seeing as everything else is lower value than that now in the fighter itemization technique. So 1 to 8, we're not having the best game, but again, I like this because Morgana is not going to be a Kale. And it's very common for me when I'm Zara, even if I'll do way more damage than the Morgana will, and I'll have, you know, the most damage in the game, I might be like 5 to 18. Uh, I do prefer to be a bit higher in the kill count. I think I average like around 7. But again, you're not in, in necessarily like a 1v9 uh, champion in that particular sense. You can be, but at the same time, you're not a Kale. And I think I'm trying to drive home that point with this particular game. Again, respect Flash on the Q. Uh, we do have the Kha'Zix trying to yeet in onto the Kiana. Predator activation is 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 done because Vega is using that button. That's a lot of domination, actually. I was just staring at all the domination. Um, Kiana looking for flanks. Morgana again looking for Qs, that one doesn't miss, we just hit our W. The wave kill is very good though, the wave kill is very good. I do think that this is obviously an extremely good item that we could have easily... Oh my goodness gracious, we do have... <laughs> <laughs> that was a very fast Morgana, I'm not going to lie, I like that. Very good, very, very good. Um, excellent choice of runes. Thinking about the runes, and this I spoke to King Nidog about this in my bootcamp. Uh, with like grass j4 jungle you know talking about what do runes actually do what do they scale with? what do they scale with, with in regards to what you build and it's really really interesting actually so um definitely things like rasp where it actually scales with hp the only rune that does so and you know thinking about yeah, yeah you want dark harvest is morgana but what's going to actually help you win the game and play the game well phase rush will definitely do a lot and in every case it's proct here in these fights you've seen it so orn gets zillion fortunately very close fight, not really getting anything done. The game is squashed. And we're down 4k, down 6 kills. We do have 2 dragons. Kiana splitting top lane. We do have bounties. Okay, this is fine. But you see how it's a completely different play style. We're not even talking about jungling anymore. We're just talking about being Morgana, moving around the map. Thank you, sir. Um, let's go sprinting. Uh, here we go again. Let's see, look at this. 110. Let's just keep an eye on that. She wasn't really in that fight doing backline damage, but that's the downside. You know, like, certain champions can definitely still do damage in, in, in these kinds of games. Morgana's, if you don't hit your Q or W, there's no real damage outside of your autos. So, it's tough with this kind of mobility comp. Overall, though, I still think this is great. We have 9 of 16 KP. We've gotten two dragons. We did have to give up a Herald. We can go to some counter jungling, but we know the respawn. Herald is activated top lane, so don't commit too deeply. We see the, the LeBlanc in the mid lane with the Nami. All right, now we can maybe set a pick. Charlie Heaton down the mid lane. Through the goalposts, and oh, he missed, hits the pole, no three points. Uh, that will only make sense for NA fans. Sorry, EU. All right, I mean, unless you like rugby, but then it's not. 
three points, is it? So, LeBlanc double distortion, we shall leave. Thank you. Dragon spawning, third one is very, very good. We can then trade thirds for uh, Baron plays. So, so points for Baron plays. Auto attack, there you go. You see? You see? There you go. Hit your Q, hit your W. Burn them down, baby. Burn them down. It's, it's so good when you have chain CC. Makes me very happy. Very, very happy. Sorry, I'm, I'm a bit overtired, so my brain's going weird places. Aatrox here goes for the flank. Uh, we do have TP from Orn Hub activated. Now we're all turning onto the... Um, very, very good. Zone the diver, kill the diver, okay? Then turn as a squad onto the next target. We did see the, the, the... Very, very good on the Kha'Zix. Hopefully you saw that. We did see that. So as soon as this dive backline is happening, some, you have to deal with them. Together, you have to deal with them. But fortunately... Man, this item is so good. Fortunately, there's way less HP in those uh, items, but I was going to say, uh, that's what I was going to say, and then I re remembered he built, I remembered he built Hellbreaker, so. <laughs> okay, we're still good, we're still good, we're still, uh, no stress, no stress. Down 3k, hmm, let's hold the mid lane. Yes, 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 angels of, of life and death, excuse me, sir. Let's make sure now we control our camps as much as we can. Wave clear. Control your jungle camps. Once you have an itemization spike, reset back to base. In those close, really, in those really close fights, there, if you don't need to use a stopwatch, don't use the stopwatch because once you've used it, now you're kind of forced to upgrade to, to Zonia's. If you can save that stopwatch, like Morgana did, using the phase rush to run around like this, and you can keep that stopwatch in pocket, you'd finish your Morellos. Gives you good HP. Really, really nice with the grievous wounds, obviously against their team comp. And um, you can basically save the stopwatch for the next fight, and you most likely, by the time you've done that, will have enough cash monies to buy the Zonias again afterwards. This is very, very good. So Orn is going in on the Aatrox. Aatrox is going in on the Orn. Nami tries to cut up to heal, but the whole you know, the whole team sees this and is rotates to it because they know that the objective on the map is the Baron. Excellently done there on the Kha'Zix as well. Bad flanking. You've got to take those pulls. Oh my goodness, very nice. You've got to take those pills. Pills? Don't take the pills. The pulls that the enemy team gives you. So when you see this over-aggression with Hellbreaker, and there's literally nothing else on the map taking your attention, this is great as a team to rotate up and collapse and assist, because the other team is most likely doing the same. If they are disconnected and you're Morgana, you can use your Q beautifully, like she did in the Nami, to immediately remove someone from the map. You hit a Q, that person's dead. So you're the pick queen, in essence. Obviously, the damage is pretty solid, too. So let's see. We're at 2,126 damage. So, I mean, you think... You think, wow, she's actually not doing that much damage. She's 3, 2, 12. Fine. Absolutely fine. Play the way you're meant to play Morgana. It doesn't change because you're jungle. But you can have games where you do the most fight, the most damage, and you can just hit Q, W, and then ult, and then people die. You know, that's it. End of story. There's a lot of damage in Morgana's kit. Especially if you're going to go with a more death cappy vibe when you're ahead. And that's why she was so strong in that meta, because she would clear so quickly, scale so quickly, and all of a sudden, she was literally building Gats Caps and up three levels, and no one could do anything to her, because as soon as you go into her, she hits a point blank, key, a point blank Q, and uh, ults you, and you die. And you're like, understandable. My apologies, madam. All right. ADC for ADC, so to speak. Ult activation, Kha'Zix's bot lane. Morgana's uh, right here. Can we hit the Q? No, we cannot. It is a block, or misses the E as well, it's kind of tragic. We see the Aatrox dive in the back line, and Morgana's on the other side. Kha'Zix kills the Kiana. A little bit of a disconnect, we hit the Q on the Aatrox, we can create some space. Again, no one's killing him right now, we do not have enough da enough damage whatsoever. Orn is trying to do his best to fake it. We do hit that one, is it the right one? No, it's not, unfortunately. Um, Orn again, one more, there we go, thank you very much. Maybe we do have enough damage, maybe I was talking nonsense. Never mind, alt activation. We do! <sighs> very nice. <laughs> Look at me talking nonsense. Orn, Fimble Winter. I love the build. Sichuani 2. And of course, Morgana, keeping the space, using the face rush, hitting the stuns when appropriate. And that was glorious. I enjoyed. I love it when it turns around. So we had one turn around at the bottom lane. I thought, maybe we could do this. <laughs> no, we couldn't. And then th this one, I thought, hey, we can't do this. And then they could. So that shows you I don't fully know Morgana's limitations and her kit. I do know Orn's, though. I wasn't sure if I'm the Orn there, if Morgana can do the damage. As Orn, I know what I can do, and I will turn 2v3s and 1v2s all the time, especially with this particular build path, especially with the ticks of damage on Sunfire. So, beautifully played by both of them. Excellent. 
very happy with that. Now, we do have a soul point coming up. So with the 1500 cash monies we have in pocket, let's give that to the Kiana because we're nice. We're a little bit out of mana. Do they want to face check? Do you want to face check a Morgana? Ooh, bad move. They do have a Nami, fortunately. But the Q into Double Bomb is absolutely hysterical. We're a little low mana, which is a concern. Again, Charlie Heaton with the ult down the middle. <laughs> it's all I feel like Gagurin's doing this game. But, you know. He's... All right. Okay. Aatrox on the bot side here. We're low on mana. Auto attack the tower, take the tower, take the tower. Very nice. Activate your ultimate. This is it. You see that? Now the movement again. You ult, you get the stun, you hit the Q, makes the W easy to hit, you're making sure all your abilities are hitting. But now we are definitely out of mana, so we pull back. This is very, very good. It's methodical, it's controlled, it's fun to rinse clear, to control the map, and to do things like this. And the biggest thing I like about it is you can do dragons. I like that so much. It's the biggest problem with my champion pool in the off meta in the off meta field. That I can't just go and do a level 5 dragon, a level 6 or 7 dragon. Uh, hello, we don't have mana here. Okay, you're taking a little bit of it. Are you just going to wall hop or are you going to do the dragon? Because he doesn't want to give the soul. Oh, beautiful hit. Well. <laughs> Why have smite, you know? He's forced to flash the Q again. That's so sad. Clenching. Real clenching going on. But you see what I'm saying with that kind of stuff? It's so irritating. Lux, old, Vega like this, just drops a void bomb on it, and you're like, well, glad I don't I'm glad I have smite. The thing is though, when you're an off-meta jungle, you can't combo with smite. With a lot of them. Like with Zara, you can technically Q Smite, but it's a, there's a timer. E, there's a timer. Uh Morgan, it's a little easier, but again, your W does tick damage. Assassins, man. You see this? There you go. We've reached the point. You go in, Morgana just hits the Q, ults you, and what do you do? You're done. Just slap the pool underneath and GG. Uh, she basically q the dildo, or the little stones over there. Follow the Orn to victory. This has turned out so nicely. This is a really good extended sequence. We have 4k in pocket. I don't like that we have so much in pocket, though. We 100% should... We could easily here go back to base and spend... But we don't need to because we're still doing everything we need to do to win the game. Look at the W there. Look at the damage. And obviously the Morello's ticks are absolutely huge. Kite, kite, kite. Use your spacing. That's how you beat Aatrox later on. We didn't have to base. Huge point there. As they're most likely going to end the game here. You might feel like we want to reset for the dragon. But if you don't need to because you have numbers advantage. You always have that assistance. And you have the damage and the survivability of your champion that's still viable to stay on the field. There's no need to reset, right? The problem is if they get things and shutdowns and then they respawn, um, then they're ahead of you. But because you're way ahead of them now, you're level 16 at this point, you keep staying out in this extended sequence, you can end games like this. And this is something that's very interesting. Not a lot of champions can afford to do this, but supports, Zyra's, Morgana's, very easily you can. Kale's less so, but again, once you're Kale 16, who cares? Again, they jump in, you press R, you win. Well played. Nice and methodical. Fun game. Definitely looked a little weird and boring, but it elevated so nicely. I hope you enjoyed and learned something. Hope you enjoyed the Morgana jungle. So yes, you can do it. Are there weaknesses? Yes. Can you navigate those weaknesses if you have a brain? Also, yes. Just make sure you pay attention to level 1. Do your tracking sequence correctly. And that's about it. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial. All life. I'm very tired after the boot camp.